All right, it's uh, 6.49. I'll call the, uh, give me the whole meeting uh, to order. First item on the agenda is 3.1, tidy up Tuesdays. So when Jen was in Brandon at the conferences, I don't know if you found this in the newspaper or if it was just basically. something that was brought up. And basically it was they put aside um, tidy up Tuesdays every Tuesday at 10 a.m. for 10 minutes. They get everybody to go outside, pick up garbage, pull some weeds, just do some house cleaning and stuff. So uh, this is a great idea. We're asking them maybe have some some uh, funds put aside. But we're wondering, should we be doing this just for downtown area? <laughs> or should we be looking at residential? Because if we're going to be supplying like garbage bags and stuff, you want people to register. What would, would you guys like to even entertain this? I think it's a wonderful idea. This is actually a nice pat on the back for people that are already doing this. So <laughs> it's just an initiative that I think would be neat. Um, um, they have, well, they have that, uh, what is that, Paul Renewal, don't they, they, they do they have that, down, that clean up? They do a community clean up. Community they cleanup. do one a year. So this is every Tuesday. No, no, I understand. No, I understand. Could be partner. I do it every Saturday. Yeah. For the Tuesdays? Yeah. yeah. How, sure, how do you want to partner with them? Well, I just thought if... I mean, right, it's going to be a budgetary thing and that sort of stuff. So seeing if they would be willing to be a location and maybe supply some gloves and garbage bags oh, or sure. if they want to do window decals or whatever, see if they're willing to help help us promote it and that sort of stuff as well. Do we know people that are already doing that or whatever that we could uh, ask for their input? And Brandon is the ones that's... Well, yeah, but I mean locally here. I, I remember seeing a couple We would know. Local. Wouldn't we know if they were someone so was doing it locally? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's people that do little things on their own. There's, there's Chris Anderson. She picks up, oh, yeah, she yeah, picks yeah, up lots that, of garbage. That, and there's Marcel. should be upset if other people picked up garbage. Marcel and Gwen Lachance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They yeah. do yeah. it. They do it lots. Yeah. Margaret, yeah. Margaret Commodore does it. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard that. So would you be interested in looking at this downtown area <laughs> all over? Or do you want to sign in because we're going to be giving bags and gloves? Like, I think that's why I think the whole the thing. involved if you're going to do the businesses and stuff like that. Okay. And then maybe they do the business Start there at least. residential. I just, just not let this lose traction. And quickly because I mean, this is the time of year where it's absolutely nasty. It's yeah. looking pretty rough. I can do the downtown cleanup. Um, I started that my business quite a few years ago. I sent letters to everybody and got everybody to sweep their sidewalk. And I think I was telling Alan the other day, there was one day I actually had five businesses outside sweeping your sidewalk at the same time. And very I cool. felt wonderful. It was very cool. Uh, we need to pretty our downtown and I'm actually spearheading something that was already in the works in my head and it's at home. Like I've told you, I have five planters and one's going to go in front of Alan's going to take one. I'm going to take one, yeah. Good. In front, so it's all wonderful. It's, it's coming, but um, one thing, it's, it's, it's a good place to bring it up now. When I was going to school in Ontario, they had a week out of every year, maybe two weeks, in the spring, and every person, every student in town got a parcel of town to clean up, and it didn't matter. It was the whole town that got blitzed. So, and they started from kindergarten right up, to, and they went right up to grade 13, and you cleaned up. So it instilled into everybody that if you're going to pick the, throw that garbage down, you were going to end up picking up. So it just from kindergarten to grade 13, and the town stayed pretty clean. Like, Community brought by the boat. Like it was yeah. the whole the whole one. So. Um, mm -hmm. I already approached uh, Mr. Miller at, um, at OCN, and uh, he was he asked if he could steal my idea, so I said, you go right ahead. So I don't know if he started it or not, but it's a good place to, to start. Maybe at the next Kelsey meeting you could bring that up? We could. Or I could yeah. do that too. Yeah. yeah, but there's so many different things that it, kids can do. Like, you see some kid walking by, you know, they throw the garbage out. Well, if they know they have to pick it up, and nobody was excluded. It's everybody, be a week. everybody did it. Yeah. Okay. So the recommendation is for us to contact Chamber of Commerce to see if they partner. Right. I'd just like to comment. I think it should be focused downtown. Otherwise, it's too broad an area. Um, I know when we yeah. do the big community cleanup, they do a lot on the riverfront. Yeah. But if we, our downtown area, just how our, our geography, how we set up, 
our highest traffic counts are Highway 10. Okay. So yeah. I mean that should be the key focus. If we start spreading it out, we're never going to achieve the results. You can always spread ours if, it, if, it, if this gets bigger. Right? Well, maybe so, it'll spread. Yeah. Right. This is step one, yeah. and then right. it'll go to the next step. I think yeah, probably once we get it off the ground, we maybe wouldn't hurt to send letters to the school. Nope. You, just to let them know what we're doing, and you know if they can piggyback on it on their own. So right. step one, chamber. Approached the school before, and they didn't like the idea. This was a few years ago, but um, people change. Yep. Partnership, I think, will make a big difference. Yep. Four point one organizational so operational one, review. One last. Sorry. What, what about the garbage? So I mean, nobody owns the garbage. It's being picked up. It's on yeah. the street, and we're asking people to pick it up. Can we just uh, make it so that? I mean, I don't know. This is uh, whether it's a crazy thought or not. But if it's tidy up Tuesday and it's happening Tuesday from ten to eleven, can there be a town pickup truck that swings by along the cross to downtown yeah, and just sure. yeah. grabs the garbage bags off the curb or whatever that are that are obviously from the cleanup and off they go. Maybe go in, yeah. As opposed to asking people to clean up on the street and then put it in their garbage bin and then we have a bylaw about what's allowed and what's not and all the rest of it. Yeah, that's what I did. They had all the, okay. they had the trucks in. Okay. Organizational operation review. How's your good? So every year when we go through budget deliberations, we talk about services we offer as a community and whether we should still offer them. And one of the things I always struggle with is that I know, I like to think I know my operation, maybe I don't, but I certainly don't know their operation, right? And there's some things, uh, as I relate on Friday, Randy, that I can touch on because I've had some experience with it in my line of work. But it's difficult for a number of reasons that we're trying to, we're asked to make decisions on something we're not really experts on. Um, and also everyone's crushed for time. It's not always fair to say, Randy and Jen, you know, give us a big 20 page report on what you think we should do, which is above and beyond. So. Um, it came to our attention a couple of weeks ago, back in 2008, the exchange group came and did an operational review of the entire organization. Um, but it seems based on the last three years since I've been here, every time we talk about this, this is really focused on public works. And, you know, for an example, whether we should do sidewalk clearing in the winter or not. I mean, uh, again, we spoke about, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. Sounds like a good idea, but maybe it makes no sense at all. I don't know, it's not our operation. So maybe we should brush off that report and just focus on the section that deals with public works, approach the exchange group and say, could you guys update this one section? Not a full-blown report, but something that's focused that can come back and we can actually maybe act on. Okay, anybody? Well, I'll, I'll just say that um, I remember that when this report was, uh, was, was brought to uh, council um, and uh, like it, it's uh, it's about 50 pages, 55, 56 pages, and um, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit in here, things that we could we could accomplish. But um, I think Alan's right that maybe we should look at public works first and then and take it from there. But know that this does exist, and that we spent somewhere between six and eight thousand dollars on it. Ten thousand. There you go, ten thousand dollars. So um, um, it's on it's on the Alnet. If you're sitting around going, well, I absolutely have nothing to do with this hour. Sit down and read it. And uh, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be good reading. If I may add on that, yep. a lot of this stuff that was in this report just happened naturally <coughs> with time as we progressed. Um, one of the big things was about how we used to do meetings, how we used to photocopy. We just talked about that in our council chamber. And having an electronic system. A lot of it was that. I would like to see some more meat and potatoes in here. I would like to see an actual Here's something, set up that time span. This is what we want to accomplish in this time, and here's what we can do. Rather than just a report that says, well, you can look at this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and that's what I'd like to see if we're going to And again, if I may, that's the point of, was part of the reasoning by focusing on one section, right? Yeah. So you, you do have some meat and potatoes to it, not just... Achievable. You know, exactly, yeah. 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 Like not, not a bad a, idea at all. Councilor Roth. Do, do we know, or, or have we got any feedback on what happened? I don't know much of it's been done, but obviously then there's some that is undone, and and is the department aware and already working on those things, or or is, is it just been set aside? Because sometimes with these you you have you give it to somebody to do another project, and they say they, they can actually say the same thing in another way, and and here's the bill. Uh, we we want to be, before you give it out. 
making sure that, that our departments are aware of, of where the shortfalls are or, or because they may also be saying, hey, we need direction in these areas. So if you do ask somebody to do it, they in fact uh, already have some idea of what, what they're looking at and, and when they meet with them, they can uh, be more focused on, on what they achieve. And then that whole thing of it has to be the measurable timeline and then we have to follow it. And that's a, that's a bigger one because part of that comes back to this table and council making sure that we invest the money to do the thing, we have to uh, ask for the follow up and make sure it, it comes along. So that has to be part and parcel of the whole thing so that in uh, two years after it's done, well, well, we'll be able to say, well, look at what we've achieved. So, so there are, uh, in, this, in this report, there are some things that are outdated, for sure. Um, there's some things that don't exist anymore, but for the most part, uh, that's how a wheel spins. And it would be crazy for us not to, uh, not to cherry pick it. And let's ask for a quote before we even go any further. Like, let's ask for a quote saying, here's what we're looking at, here's what we want, what's going to cost us? Because it is 10 years old. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And you're also not having a whole entire organization right, review. want one. Okay, so look into that. So that's my direction yeah. is to get a quote? Yeah. I'm kind of out of the opinion that we probably don't have to spend too much money on this, though, because it's all... But we'll see. See what, see what comes of it. All right, uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. Communications policy, then. Councillor Cross. Um, so everybody around this table has said that we need to work on communicating better, um, both internally and externally. So we did have a working group that uh, was working on a communication policy, but as happens, sometimes things kind of fall to the side or get put on the back burner. So I'm just looking for council to set some timelines because I've noticed that if there are timelines in place, then things seem to follow those timelines and uh, get done. And that makes us a little bit more motivated to uh, follow up with things. So I don't think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done to the policy. We have sat down with managers a couple of times to review it. So I just think it needs some minor tweaking. But again, um, I think it should be made somewhat of a priority. Yep. I agree with that 100%. Last time we met, we kind of, I I don't know, Jim and yourself couldn't attend the meeting. I think you had other commitments. No, I was there. Not at the last one. There was just Brian had come. And we talk, talked about uh, how we can finish rolling this out. There was very few changes, like you said. But what we needed to do is integrate the website and how we were going to do our social media stuff. So I think as soon as we get working on that group part, then we can finish up this one and make a part and parcel. Before we leave tonight, can we, can we set a meeting for that group to get together? See, that, this really shows a need of communication policy because mm -hmm. I had no idea that meeting even took place. And I don't understand why one council would have the meeting without the, without the two there. So, so anyway, we didn't communicate. This yeah, is my job. So let's set a time for a meeting. Budget and the special service levy stuff. Yeah, so December 12th. That's a long time ago. Yep. Sadly, it was. So, yep, get her back. So, and, you know, and I, I, yeah. I couldn't help but notice, of course, uh, you know, guess who's the mayor? So I get a lot of phone calls going, hey, when are you going to clean the pool up in front of my yard? When's that, when's that lake going to disappear? You know, uh, so I don't know the priority list. I have no idea. So if we if we were to put that on our website and on, on our Facebook page, or the, our, our priorities of where we're going, and we realize that it's out there, people tend to settle down. So, use our tools. So if I can ask you, so how do you want to proceed? Do you want to meet as a group with that, like your, your committee of council as it relates to yes. the whole social media, and then we blend it in with this one? Because they kind of are part and parcel. Yeah. Yes. I thought redesigning the website, is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. It's what you want in your policies with your, like what we're going to be putting on, how we're going to be putting on. Sorry, this would be easier to show you, because this forms part of the whole policy that we have. So when you get into further into this, it's talking about uh, how we're going to be dealing with inquiries, anything we're doing with our social media, like how we're going to be putting stuff online. 24 hours. Yeah. So as soon as that's done, we can integrate it with this policy. So as per your request, when would you like that set up? I'm available the second week of May. Me too. I'm not available the first week of May, and it's almost the first week of May. Yeah, I'm away <laughs> so. next week. 
So we can set a date up uh, any time after the uh, 15th of May. And I'll provide you guys with a copy of the latest. Okay. That would be good. Okay, and that's for your website. So. Any other comments? Okay. Um, place branding. Councilor Cross. Uh, so we have a place branding session with Travel Manitoba last week, two weeks ago, I can't remember now. Um, so they've been doing some work around the province where they've been going to places that were lacking tourists and visitors to the community and helping them kind of rebrand themselves and market things that will bring visitors to the community. Um, you know, in Gimli, they get a lot of summer tourists, so they're not lacking in summer tourists, but in the off season, they had nobody coming, so, um, you know, they help them to really market more visitors to come in the winter and that sort of thing. Um, so how it works is that Travel Manitoba provides, like, marketing support, um, design support, like, they will create a brand and campaigns for you that you can launch on social media, that you can, you know, you can do TV, radio, whatever. Um, and they will do all of that at no cost, but what they um, require from the community before um, investing their time and their experts and everything is commitment that they will do something with this marketing campaign that they have built for the community. So they ask that the community um, mark or earmark $10,000 over three years, so $30,000 in total again over three years uh, to market and promote and to use this new place branding. Um, so it's been successful in the other communities with bringing in tourists and that sort of thing. Um, we had a good session with really good turnout. Um, you know, um, there wasn't, there was one counselor there from the RM and then two from OCN that both had said that they bring it back respectively to their councils. So what I'm <coughs> suggesting is that as a tri-council, we all pitch in $5,000 a year, um, which would be $15,000 for marketing, um, and then get that commitment to go, because Travel Manitoba will come back with a, like a mock marketing and branding campaign for us, and then it's at that point before they give us the rights to anything that we would have to have the financial commitment um, before they give over anything to us. So I just kind of thought that um, I mean, we have the Destination Marketing Committee who we can put it on the agenda to see what kind of role that, that they want to play in this, but I just thought that if the town could kind of take the lead a little bit and approach the RM and, and OCN, because like I said, there was representation there as well to see if it's something that they're interested in moving forward with, because it would really be branding the tri-communities, right? Like, it's not really aimed to market necessarily one community over the other, but really to just drive more visitors to our tri-region. What did they, what did they think of our branding, our adventure territory? Uh, that's Thompson's. <clears throat> Thompson's adventure territory? I thought Thompson was a hub. No, Thompson's adventure territory, Gateway to the North, has already been kind of used and overdone, so they wanted to go away from that and to do something different. Um, so I don't know, it, I really wish more people could have been there because it was a really good session and they extrapolated a lot out of the group by getting, you know, information about the area, like asking questions about, okay, so for example, yeah, Trappers is really great, but you're kind of at capacity, right? The hotels are full at Trappers, there's no room to bring any more people, so you don't want to market, as much as you want to market Trappers, you don't want to market Trappers because you don't have the capacity to bring in more visitors, um, but then you look at like the summer, right? Like not everything's booked up in the summer or, um, you know, we, from what I hear, tend to have more people in the hotels during the weekdays as opposed to weekends. So targeting more short-term trips that would bring people here on the weekends and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah. If I can ask you some question too, as you're talking about the partnership. So if something happened and they did, like, say OCM and the RM wanted to do their own thing or didn't want to participate, can we do it still with less money or no? We have to do a minimum of ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on a For three years. The other, the other thing with that is, uh, two years ago, with through Tri Council, they did. They were doing that economic development brochure idea, and uh, the Tri Council one 
um, brought here by the river and joined by the bridge yeah. kind of stuff. And, and that's already started some of that because it included the business side, the tourism side and whatnot. So that's something we can build upon moving, moving forward. And, uh, and it ties in with the three communities, which is the big broad area we're covering anyway. Alan? 25% of the hotel tax goes to the Destination Marketing Reserve Fund. And the Destination Marketing Reserve Fund was established for the specific, person, specific pur purpose of destination marketing. So that's what this is, right? So that's what you pay for, not the regular taxpayers. That's why that fund was created. There, there's, I'm assuming there's ample funds there. It's a mm -hmm. great idea. I, I totally believe it should be shared. Even if it's not, you should do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it should be coming from that fund because that's what it's designed to do. It should be on the taxpayers' back, be on the hotel tax reserve fund. My words too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't speak for the committee, no. right? So no. we would have to go to the committee and pitch that. There's a committee that decides how that money is spent. It's not council that decides. So again, I we've talked about Travel Manitoba and branding and destination marketing. We do have money and a budget for marketing that's been earmarked in an annual budget. But again, I can't speak for them. I'm not saying that that five thousand dollars can't come from destination marketing. Mm -hmm. I just think that we should be the ones to ask and see if there's interest and to That's see if there's... Completely agree. Completely agree. Would that be easier if we applied through? Well, I mean, you don't necessarily think you would need to apply for destination marketing. Like, it's a conversation we have to have, right? Like, <coughs> we've said as a committee that, you know, like, marketing the town and promoting the town is a priority for us. So I think we'll have to figure out how that works, right? I, I don't know if the town could apply for a grant. Be something yeah. to ask Graham, probably. Either way, I think yeah. what we need to do is send the letters. Yeah, that's the first thing. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Just to see, yeah, like, is there. Chad. So um, it says that they'll contribute uh, like 30000 worth of in kind support. So if we bumped it up to fifteen per year, they'd provide 45000 Well, that's just kind of like um, a base. Like, that's kind of. Yes and no. So I guess if we invested more, then they would probably create more um, material for us. So then, yes, that number would go up. But like thirty thousand is kind of like their base price for creating the brand, right? So I, I guess that leads that kind of answers my next question. But so when it says in kind support, that's that's actually developing the marketing materials. That's not actually. Uh, Paying for any of the advertising. No, we would be. That's what the. That's okay. What, that's why they want us to earmark money, right? Oh, like sure. It would Just essentially be for go, advertising. Go to boards yeah, advertising. We would have access to their designer, like their graphic. They have mm -hmm. like a graphic design sure. and advertising company that works for them, right? So that we would have access to that through Travel Manitoba. So, do they have a bit of a resume that indicates they're capable of doing this? Yeah, like I, said, I really wish people could have been to the presentation, or we could even ask for them to come and do a presentation, yeah. maybe to council or like. Once we find out when they're coming back to pitch the brand to us, it would be really great if everybody could be there because, I mean, they had, like, a whole, like, there were seven communities in the province that they've done branding for. So there was Finley, there was uh, Brandon, there was, I'm, oh, I'm going to mess them up, um, Morden and Winkler. Um, and they're working on a couple right now, too. Like, so they're working on one for Flynn Flan. Um, and now they're kind of working north, right? It's all it's all south of us. Swan River just launched there as I leave. Um, but yeah. So their biggest and probably most successful one is Clear Lake Country. So oh, there you Google go. Google that. And go on and see what they've done. And if anyone's been to Clear Lake in the last three years, not that it was never not yeah. nice, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Clear Lake Country is gone? Clear Lake yeah. Country. Yeah. Yeah. It'll come up on our Discover Clear Lake. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the So if you ask even is. email Colin Ferguson, he's pretty good good at getting back to everyone. He can send you the links that have, like, play the videos. Mm -hmm. Like, Crystal Mitch went and gave me one, but Clear Lake's mm -hmm. your big home run they've yeah. hit. Mm -hmm. right. But if you've seen any of them, it's, it's impressive. Okay, right. so that's good to know. That's like a good. I just, I just want to say that I've been uh, going to Thompson at least once a month for the last 15, 20 years, and tonight is the first time I've heard them play, lay claim to venture territory, so they can buy it. So, not here, it's All right, um, I don't see it on the flight anymore. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, we got payroll and accounts, please. Uh, we would require resolution for pay period eight in the amount of eighty-seven thousand seven ninety-five fourteen. General checks for five hundred nine one eighty-two sixty-seven and EFTs for ninety-nine five ninety-nine forty-five. 
for a total of 696-577-26. Suez uh, Technologies, Chemical, Morgan Fuels, 54,000 for the airport. Um, Stitco Heat, 50,000. Vadim is our yearly fees. That's our, um, our accounting and our municipal system here for our computer. And that's yearly fees of 16,000. Those are just some of the higher bills. Resolution to pay them. Just one comment yeah. again. I'll just keep saying it until the end of time on the propane. Yeah. So now we're over 300,000 and the carbon tax is yet to hit. So we're looking at operational stuff. It's it been three years. Not to say. Three years. All right. Uh, yeah, one resolution. 20, 28 resolutions tonight and one at the moment. Got to spread them out, I guess. Okay, yeah. motion then to moving camera. No, I got to move the thing. Yeah. We resolve that we now move ourselves into the in camera portion of the committee of the whole with Mayor Scott and the, uh, and the chair to discuss matters requiring attention. Okay, thanks everyone.